Welcome to our devotional study today. We are in Genesis chapter 48. Uh, in this chapter, Jacob is soon going to die, and we see in the first seven verses, we saw that Jacob, uh, in essence, as far as the uh, inheritance is concerned, the birthright is concerned, he um, adopts the two sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, to be his own, and then we're going to see that not only does he adopt them, but he also blesses them uh, in these verses that we're looking at today. So we we want to begin looking at verses 8 through 12, where we see Ephraim and Manasseh um, presented to Jacob, and uh, then we will see how he responds to that as we look at the remainder of this chapter uh, in days to come. So in Genesis chapter 48 and verse 8, it says, And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring me, bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees and he bowed himself with his face to the earth so a few things i want us to see as we go through these verses today in our study of of uh the book of genesis first of all we see that uh in verse 8 that israel or jacob asks who it is that is with joseph uh see in verse 8 it says Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, who are these? And the reason why he asked that question was not because he did not know his grandchildren, but rather he asked because of his age, the fact his eyesight was getting very poor and he could no longer see that well. And because of that poor eyesight, uh, he asked Joseph who it is that is with him. Verse 10 tells us, now the eyes of Israel were dim for age so that he could not see. And because of that, dimness of eyes he asked joseph uh who it is that he has brought with him and uh indeed it's a terrible thing when somebody loses their eyesight or their eyesight is pretty near gone but you know as i stopped and thought about that there's something that's even uh more sad and that's when people lose their spiritual vision um you know sometimes our spiritual vision can be distorted by some things uh sometimes it's distorted because we don't want to see We've made up our minds what we're going to do or what we're going to believe, and we don't want to see what the Word of God teaches. We don't want to see what the Word of God has to say about that particular uh, about that particular thing. So we choose to remain blind to that. Um, you know, we choose to be willingly ignorant. That is dumb on purpose. We will not learn uh, what it is that the Word of God has to say about it. But not only are, are people sometimes blinded spiritually because they will not see. But sometimes people see things wrong as well because of the simple fact that if I can put it this way, they're guilty of looking through somebody else's glasses. When they want to know what the Word of God teaches about a particular thing, you may ask someone, well, why do you believe that? Well, I believe that because so-and-so taught me. Not because I see it in the Word of God, so-and-so taught me. And we look at a certain doctrine that way because that's the way we've been taught. I was guilty of that, you know, some, especially in my earlier life. I believed things a certain way simply because that is the way I was taught them, not because I could back those things up from the Word of God. And I was guilty of looking through somebody else's glasses. And what we need to do is we need to allow the Word of God to determine what we believe, not people, um, not churches, but the Word of God to determine what we believe. And we need to be able to back up what we believe from the word of God. So we see here that Israel had poor physical vision and you ought to encourage us and challenge us to say, God, help me to not have poor spiritual vision. Help me to have discernment. Help me to know what the word of God says. And, and there's an easy way to know what the word of God says when you read the word of God and you study it. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's no wonder today that many of the modern versions, Satan has seen to it that the word study is removed from that verse because Satan does not want Christians studying the word of God. And then we notice also in verse 8 that it was, uh, the blessing was pronounced by Israel, not by Jacob. It says in Genesis uh, 48, verse 8, Israel beheld Joseph's sons. 
Jacob was a supplanter. And as a supplanter, he had no power to bless. But now as Israel, that one who is the prince with God, he did have the right to bless. And Joseph brings his children near to Israel so that Israel can bless them. And what a blessing it is to see this this blessing that Israel pronounces upon them. And indeed, it is a blessing that has been directed by God as Israel pronounces those blessings. And then we see something very beautiful in verse 10. It says there, Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age that he could not see, and he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. Could you imagine this picture here with me just for a moment? Uh, Israel kissing and embracing his grandchildren. You know, as I stopped and I thought about that as I was studying through this passage, really words cannot even begin to convey the emotion that had to have been in Jacob's heart regarding the fact that he was able to know Joseph's sons. Remember back just a few chapters, Jacob had been convinced that Joseph had been killed. And, and because of that, he was certainly convinced that he would not only never see Jake, Joseph again, but that he would obviously never see the offspring uh, of Joseph ever. And, and you could imagine how crushing that would have been to Jacob. And now, the one Jacob who had thought not thought that he would ever see Joseph again, not only has he got to see Joseph again and spend a number of years with Joseph, but now he also gets to see the sons of Joseph, the grand, which will be Jacob's grandsons as well. And where the light that was to Jacob, and you can picture Jacob now as he's getting ready to die, and he embraces Manasseh, and he embraces Ephraim. And as it tells us in verse 10, he kisses them and he embraces them. And you can imagine certainly that that was a very emotional time for Jacob near the end of his life. And then Jacob acknowledges in verse 11, it says, Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has showed me also thy seed. He allows Joseph to get a glimpse into what's been, what was going through his mind as he embraced Manasseh and Ephraim. He said, listen, Joseph, I thought that I would never see your face again. And not only have I been blessed to see your face, but I've seen the face of your children. I've been able to, to get to know my grandchildren and to love them and to embrace them and to kiss them. Uh, and now he is doing that just before he passes from this world. And, and as he says that, he says it in such a way that he's saying to Joseph, you know what, Joseph, I've been blessed by the Lord. I thought I wasn't going to see your face, but I've seen your face. I've seen the face of my grandchildren, and truly God has blessed me. And oh, friends, that you and I would understand as a people of God that we are a people that has been richly blessed by God, that we've been blessed with much more than we deserve. Friends, if we got what we deserved, we'd all be in hell today. But thank God for his blessing upon our life. Thank God for loving us when we were unlovable. Thank God for friending us when we were the enemies of God. And oh, friends, we're going to rejoice today in the goodness of God and the fact that we've been blessed mightily by God, and we ought to be involved in actively praising his holy name. And then notice verse 12. It says, And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Jacob, or Joseph bows in respect to his father here in verse 12. Now, Joseph is a man that is in very high position in a very powerful country. Egypt is a very powerful country in the world at this time, and it's become even more powerful because of the wisdom of Joseph during this great time of famine. And Joseph is a man of high position in that country, but he shows great respect to his father Jacob here. In Egypt, Joseph is well above Jacob, but yet Joseph acknowledges the fact that Jacob is worthy of his love and that he is worthy of respect. And friends, as we look at this, we realize that we should be showing respect to our parents. We should be showing deference to our parents. But sadly, many times today, the thing that is shown toward parents is defiance. Friends, that's not the plan of God. It's not the will of God. We need to be involved in respecting those whom God has put in our life. Tomorrow we'll continue to look 
at this chapter. Have a great day.